Hi, I'm Matt Brunig here with Cool Tools today to show you how to make a watch part ring out of a found object. These are all the things you're going to need for this project. You're going to need a little Smith torch, you're going to need some chain nose pliers, half round pliers, some cutting shears, some snips, a safety mask, a flat file, a ring mandrel, a jeweler's saw with a four out saw blade in it, the hot picks, soldering picks, a ring striker. We're also going to need a set of cross lock tweezers, some 14 gauge sterling silver round wire, some 28 gauge bezel wire, solder, hard, medium, and easy for sterling silver, and sterling silver sheet, 24 gauge. We're going to also need some epoxy resin to finish up the piece. We're also going to need some additional cross locks. So what I'm going to show you to do today is, is to uh, upcycle and use maybe an inherited piece like this. This is an old mechanical watch movement um, and, and it no longer functions anymore as a watch. A lot of people have things like this lying around or they've inherited it for grandma or something like that and no longer functions. So this is a good way to uh, incorporate this into a, a piece that's both interesting and you can hold on to it for sentimental reasons. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make a bezel cup to go around this watch part. And I'm using the 28 gauge wire. I'm actually using the, the watch movement itself as my form to bring this wire on around. There we go. So the tricky part is to hold, hold that in place while you make your cut. So what I like to do is take my saw frame and make a little notch. The end of the bezel wire is right here. I'm going to make my notch a little further this way because we're going to stretch it out a little bit on the ring mandrel in order to fit. I'm just going to make a notch like that rather than cut all the way through. And now take my flush cutting snips and cut right where I made that notch with the saw blade. And now using the sanding disc on the end of the flex shaft, I'm just flattening where I made my cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a couple pieces of hard solder. to solder our bezel cup. Dipping that in boric acid and alcohol. And that just gives us a nice clean surface to solder on. A solder pick. And now a little green flux right at the seam to get it going where we need it to solder. And that one rolled away, so that's why we have a backup solder bit. You notice that to adhere the solder, I tend to go with a fluffy flame and then tighten up the flame to, to solder because this thinner bezel wire is a little bit trickery. You don't want too much heat because you don't want to melt it. And we're going to quench that in pickle. So we've got our bezel shaped pretty well around our watch movement and I'm going to make it nice and round using the mandrel and a hammer. Okay, so now we're shaping the, our bezel cup around. And 
and use the watch movement to make sure that it's a good fit. You want it, you want it to be snug, but not, not really tight to where it gets stuck in there. And that looks like a pretty good fit. We're gonna take our file, file it flat. So what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up the very edge of this bezel cup so that it's gonna have a nice area to solder to the 24 gauge flat stock sheet. Make sure it's nice and round. Now we're ready to solder this onto the flat stock. I'm gonna cut off a small, smaller piece of this uh, flat stock sheet. So it's gonna be a little bit easier to put up into the cross lock tweezers to solder our bezel cup onto it. What I like to do is to take the flat piece, go ahead and quench it into the boric acid and alcohol, and then get it into position and take the bezel cup. You can kind of look around Make sure that it that it's not that it's a good seat. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this piece over because I can see a little bit of light between the bezel cup and the the base. And you can use a lighter to go ahead and ignite that boric acid and alcohol will get a nice clean surface to solder to. All right, now we're gonna cut several pieces of sterling silver easy solder. This is a low melting temperature solder, so it's going to be very user friendly to go around the, the circumference of the bezel cup without um, messing with the, the solder seam that we made to fabricate the bezel cup. That's a hard solder, so it's, a, it's got a higher melting temperature Taking a little of the green flux, putting it all the way around the perimeter of the bezel cup. Taking the number three solder pick, and dip into the boric acid and alcohol and put a little bit of that right into the center of the cup and then re reignite. You'll see that that flux is starting to bubble up around the edge. The flux basically gives our solder a pathway to solder and stick right down to the base. What I like to do is stage a, a few pieces around, spaced fairly evenly. And this, this whole staging process is, is slightly warming up the metal. I want to use a kind of a fluffy flame, larger flame, and then add more oxygen as you, as you start to see the solder flow. And all at once it starts to flow just like that. Also what I'm doing is using the back where it's a little bit off center here. When in doubt, back out. So right over here in this area, it did not solder. So I'm gonna go ahead and quench get this nice and clean and finish up the last bit of solder seam on the bottom there. So we have our bezel wall 
reattached to the to the 24 gauge sterling silver sheet and there's two options you can do to to cut this bezel cup out you can use your saw frame and you go in like this <coughs> The nice thing about using the saw frame is you can get very close to the bezel wall, but if you prefer to, to go in with a pair of snips, you can do that as well, and you can just basically cut like this. You do have to be careful not to cut into the bottom of the bezel wall, and you are going to have to do a little bit more filing at the end of this process because there's usually a little bit more left over. Now to file away the excess you just use your heavy flat file. I like to angle my file towards the the base of the bezel cup so that I'm not really cutting into that 28 gauge bezel wall. So I filed most of the excess of the, of the base of the bezel cup off and what I'm going to do is follow up with a little bit of a sanding disc around, around the outside edge. Alright, so for the, the band of this, for this bezel cup, I'm going to do one like this. It's kind of a wrap around type of a band. Um, it doesn't you know, you can, you can make it intersect real evenly right in the middle if you like. Um, I kind of like to do this little bit of an off, offset look just because it gives the, uh, the ring a little bit more flair. So that's the, the style we're going to do. Um, of course, you can, there's, there's lots of different options of what you can do as how you want to make it into a ring. So I'm just going to take the mandrel and bend that 14 gauge wire on around. And taking the rawhide mallet, just kind of tap it down. I'm using a different mandrel that, that has a bit of a groove on top of it, but you can use a regular mandrel as well, just to because the bottom of this is flat, it'll give us a good indication of where we need to be to make this approximately a size seven. I'm going to use a red sharpie to mark where I'm going to make my cut. I'm taking the flush cutting snips and cutting at kind of an angle because we're going to offset it. And attach a ring right there. We're going to solder one side and then adjust the opposite side and make the second solder. Using the flat file I'm just taking off the edge that the cutter leaves behind so we have a nice surface. To weld it to. Now to attach the ring base to the to the bezel, I'm going to use the medium solder because it's a a little higher melting temperature than the easy solder. It's going to be a good good weld to the side of the bezel cup and less likely to break in the future. I'm going to cut two paces in case I drop one. Quench that and then readjust our tweezers so that we can solder the one side. I'm going to file just a little bit of that solder off, just a little bit of that excess off of there. I'm 
rinse again in the boric acid and alcohol. What you want to do is try and dump out some of that boric acid and alcohol so that, that you don't have a lot of it burning off for a long period of time when you're adjusting to, to solder here. The more full that the cup is with, with that denatured alcohol, the longer it's going to burn. And I add a little bit of flux right where I want the solder to jump to from the ring shank. This is where it gets a little tricky. You may want to make all these adjustments without your, your torch going. Um, but usually what the best thing to do is to support the palm of your hand um, so that you're, that you're not shaking. You also want to be aware of where your flame is at all times so that you're not inadvertently burning, making your thumb too hot. quench and readjust. So what I've done is I've adjusted, we have the one side soldered and I've adjusted the other side here and we're going to solder the opposite side to the, to the side of the bezel wall. Add a little more boric acid and alcohol right here and then follow up with a little flux. So I'm just doing some polishing uh, using a pumice wheel right alongside the solder seam here at the edge where it's connected to the bezel cup. And I'm going to follow up using a sunshine polishing cloth. This is abrasive on one side and a polishing cloth on the other. I'm going to try the polishing side first and see how that does. And try the abrasive side a little bit just to just to knock off any additional solder haze that I'm seeing. Using a polishing cloth is nice because it doesn't leave a lot of uh, rouge compound behind. It's a lot less to clean up and you get a, a really nice finish. I feel that sterling silver the best way to, to keep it bright is just to use a polishing cloth on it. Often if you use um, some of the liquid cleaners, they can have an adverse effect uh, where it doesn't look as bright, kind of looks a little bit chalky at times. I'm gonna follow up with this high polish cloth that's made by Brilliant. All right. We've mixed, we're mixing two uh, parts of this uh, epoxy resin. It's uh, basically one to one. So you want to just make two little beads or piles of, of the stuff equal size. And then you can use a toothpick or whatever you like to, to mix it up. You want to make, make sure that you mix it up thoroughly. And this is what's going to hold our watch piece into our finish ring. You get it spread out along the bottom of the bezel cup. Maybe a little bit up on the, on the walls of the bezel. And then take the watch movement and press it into there. You're 
taking the epoxy resin and then you're just kind of getting it into all the little grooves of the ring. Get it covered pretty well. And then we're going to stick it into this red polymer uh, so that it has time to, to sit and solidify. I like to get it and sit low so that you can kind of see how it's beating up. Get a nice even level. Make sure that your bezel cup is sitting flat. If you do have any of it roll over the, over the side or, or drip over the side, you can use acetone on the end of a Q-tip to clean some of that up. You can set that aside for a while, make sure that everything is, is drying properly. If you notice that there's any air bubbles, you can also follow up with it using a heat gun or a source of heat of some, even a hair dryer, and that'll draw some of the bubbles up and out of the, uh, out of the epoxy resin. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this video helps you to upcycle one of those pieces that's been laying around for too long.